Everyone and head coach Jim Tressel joining us for a conversation leading into these highlights that none of the players have had before going into the Spartan Stadium. Nobody on this team had you've been there a couple times as an assistant, but your head coaching debut in Spartan Stadium. So you do the right things to take a hostile crowd out of the game and get a win on the road. Uh, what a beautiful day and a good crowd and no question about it. We felt like we needed to jump on it and and uh, we had a good honorary captain that kind of got us uh, rolling in the right way as we got ready for that ball game. Well, that never hurts. As you take the field in an unfamiliar place, it's good to see a familiar face. The old two-time starter, two-year starter from 93 to 96, Ryan Miller, a linebacker, started his last two years, one of my colleagues out there. Uh, he did a great job talking to our guys, and he got them coming out of the bus ready to play, and, and uh, here they're getting after him. They are defensively getting started off just like Ryan would like to see it and just like you like to see it as well, stopping Michigan State on his first possession, getting guys going backwards. Well, they really were. They tried to run some of those jailbreak screens on us, and our guys would have none of it, and uh, they were getting after him, putting good pressure on the passer, and a big pickoff by Ashton Yabote. Yeah, when you get some pressure, you'll force some guys into doing things that they don't like, and you know they don't like to have that one back, but Ashton's not giving it, uh, and then you take over on offense and make good things happen as well. Well, we really did. We opened with an option, and then we came back with a little reverse off of the option, and here's the second play of our drive, and they had a guy there to handle the reverse, but he wasn't quite as fast as the guy running it, and uh, Teddy did a great job. Doug Daddish was out there uh, on the lead blocking and just well-executed play. Was that something set up right from the start? You run the option? And then you run that off yeah, the option. Yeah, that, that was kind of a setup play, and, and uh, here we are coming back on defense, and Ashton Yabote again, David Patterson back there, and, and our guys did a good job. And then they're doing their little rugby kick, which doesn't have much hang time, no. and it took a true bounce, and, and Teddy got it, and we had good job blocking, good high screens in front of them, and, uh, and before you know it, it's 14-0. Yeah, 14 nothing before fans have a chance to get their seats warm, and that's the way you like it on the road. Well, it really is, and you know, it's great to have our band there. That was kind of a special surprise for us, and that gave us a little home field advantage to get started, and here DeAndre Cobb running the football, and you see David Patterson and Bobby Carpenter around there, and, and uh, Mike Kudla here that put a little bit of pressure and again they're running that jailbreak screen but Brandon Mitchell's right there and, and uh, looks like Mike Kudla again and, and they played that very very well. And that's a one yard gain there you go back on offense 12 yards complete to Ted Ginn again. He did a nice job there Troy picked the right side to read according to their coverage and that was a good conversion uh, moved us close enough for a field goal we tried to hit a home run if you remember to make yeah. it 21 nothing had it open and just off the fingertips, but we did end up getting three. Again, Mike Nugent hitting from over 50. Yeah, you miss on the long pass, but you don't miss on the long field goals no. very often. A 15 mile per hour wind behind him, so the wind playing a little bit of factor here in your drives as well, but 17 nothing to get started. Well, they did a nice job there with a little boot play, and this was a good drive. Uh, you know, Michigan State wasn't going to stop playing. They did a little crossing route, and we got, I think, picked off in man coverage. And, you know, to their credit, we're playing at their house, and, and they got good, tough kids, and, and uh, they're going to keep playing. They stopped us and forced us to punt, but Kyle Toronto airmailed it back there, and, and uh, they ended up picking the ball up on about the three, and there were a couple little pokes on the, behind the back there that I thought, but anyway, they ended up with a 32-yard return and got it out near the 35-yard line. Yeah, after a 68-yard punt into the winds, and you can't complain about that from the guy, and you can't complain about this D. Quinn Pitcock, Marcus Green, A.J. Hawk, Brandon Mitchell, they're all there to stop it. You find an open receiver here, and Michigan State will convert on it, trying to get something going here towards the end of the half. They did a good job of finding a guy in the scene. Then they tried to run the option. Simon Frazier did a great job of playing, slow playing it, and, and the linebackers were out there to stop the pitch. Here they go again from the shotgun, trying to throw the ball. Marcus Green had good pressure. And he stepped up, though, and, and uh, I think we forced him to go for another three. Yeah, A.J. Hawk in there after a nine-yard pickup, and Dave Rayner is going to kick a 26-yard field goal here. Ohio State still with a 17 to 10 lead after that. I think those are the two best kickers in the conference without question, Mike Nugent and Rayner. And here, uh, they're back. Teague did a good job. He broke a couple tackles, and, and uh, they ran the ball a little bit at this point in time. It gets it across midfield there with a 16-yard pickup and then a shovel pass, and it doesn't get much. No, it sure didn't. There you see David Patterson and A.J. Hawk and Simon Frazier and Quinn Pitcock. And again, they went for a, a long one. And, and again, that's a... That's the two best kickers in the Big Ten, maybe two of the best in the country. Yeah, and a good offense uh, in Michigan State as well. They get themselves in field position. Kind of a weird ending there. Doesn't end on a defensive penalty. They pick up 15 and get a crack at it and miss. All right, they missed off to the right. It was plenty long, but uh, you know, it was a big play for our guys to, to 
put a little bit of pressure on them and have them push it right. How much did you think that this might turn into a shootout? You don't want to get into a shootout, but you know they put up big points. Well, they really do, and they've done a good job running and passing. Uh, you know, they spray it around with screens and draws, and they broke a couple tackles. But I thought our guys had a pretty good handle on things, and, and uh, you know, we knew it was going to be a battle till the end. We didn't know exactly how it would go, but as you know, as it turned out, the second half, they didn't move the ball on us quite like they did in that little phase of the second quarter. All right, and one of those common themes that we have seen from the Buckeyes the last three weeks, taking the fight to someone. Well, there's no doubt. Our guys came out after, and we didn't do things perfectly. We still had a turnover, which you'll see in the second half we didn't need. We had some penalties. We had a couple missed tackles. We've got to get those squared away, but we did come out after people. Absolutely, and we're going to get right after the second half. Just after this break, stay with us on and half action here in a 17-13 tight ball game for the Buckeyes. Uh, at 17 nothing. who could blame the Spartans if they packed it up? They've been through a lot the last couple weeks, a triple overtime game, but this is not that type of team that's going to do that. It really isn't. We talked all week about the fact they came back after that early Rutgers loss. Mm -hmm. They went on the road, and every, you know, high spirits, and they lose to Rutgers. Everyone thought, oh, it's going to be one of those years, and they came back strong, and, and uh, you know, again, after playing Michigan, everyone is interested in playing Ohio State. So we knew it was going to be a battle. Yeah, coming back strong and sending a message is something that we're talking about here also. Well, the athletic family's had some tough times in the last year with Ricky Motter and Mikey Brescia, as you see signified there. And the number two on the back of that Rydell helmet is for Brandon Foose Cheatham, knowing that our football family is thinking about he and his family. Nice to see the athletic departments come together as one uh, when someone's in need like that. No question. There you see Teddy Ginn uh, making a first down conversion. Uh, we needed to get more consistent and keep our defense off the field a little bit. And they did a pretty nice job of cutting back their little zone plays. And then our down people missed, uh, people that were coming down into the box missed a couple hits there. And, and uh, they're working hard. And there you see Simon Frazier knocking down a third down play. And we get the football back. Yeah, big knockdown there. Almost one he could grab. Uh, couldn't quite hang on to it. But when you get the ball back, Lydell Ross back in the game and takes off. Well, we had a nine-yard gain there and unfortunately didn't hand the ball to the official. And, uh, you know, you can't give the home team any, any reason to have excitement and, and get their fans into it. And uh, the defense came right after him there. Bobby Carpenter and Marcus Green and Quinn Pitcock, A.J. Hawk making the hit there uh, as they began their drive. Here they run the option. Simon Frazier uh, forces the pitch. A.J. Hawk, Quinn Pitcock, and Marcus Green. David Patterson are right there to stop it. I gave them a chance for their great kicker to, to have a bang at it. And uh, like our great kicker, he makes most of them. Yeah, it makes you pay uh, off of a turnover. And those are the ones that hurt. 17-16 now, a tight ball game here in the third quarter. Right about this point in time, it became a little bit of a defensive battle here. They threw a little bit of screen and, and uh, made a big play there, but both defenses were getting after it. Offenses were trying to figure out everything they could do. Uh, again, another screen play. This time, not quite as far as our guys are doing a good job pursuing the football, and uh, they're moving the ball down, and, and uh, they have a chip shot there, and put three on the board. Yeah, 29-yard field goal here as we get late. You see the clock, 3.06 remaining, and you know Michigan State has just taken the lead. This is a couple of big drives here for Ohio State. That's a big 12-yard play right there on second down uh, to Santonio Holmes from Troy Smith. You saw good pass protection and really the same play, and he read the other side. And uh, as soon as he read the other side and found Teddy Ginn on the slant, and uh, their safety missed the hit, and there's nobody going to catch Teddy Ginn. No, absolutely not. 58 yards he goes for the touchdown. Uh, and, you know, the, the game did not define them. They defined the game at that point, I guess you could say. Uh, no question. Here you see Troy Smith doing a good job of of uh, hustling in there on the two-point play. He did fumble the ball a little bit, uh, but it was reviewed and ended up being a two-point conversion. And they got the ball back and uh, moved their protection a little bit and tried to, tried to make some plays along the way and a great interception, A.J. Hawk. Uh, we were just trying to run the ball out here after A.J.'s big interception, and we end up putting a, another touchdown on the board. I tell you, it's nice to see a guy like Mo Hall break it, uh, a guy who's shown patience throughout his career. He patiently waits for everyone to converge, and then takes off on a bum ankle. Well, that's right. You know, he is a special person. You know, everything he gets, he deserves. Everything that comes his way is awesome, and to have him break that 51-yarder was special. And they got the ball back, and hit a couple first downs and threw a couple Hail Marys up there and Brandon Mitchell goes up and ends the ball game. 
That is a 32 to 19 final, and uh, people who see the box score wouldn't realize that it's that close of a game. And uh, when the home team takes a lead with three minutes on the clock, uh, and you need a response on the road, we didn't show it, but you're backed up to the one yard line, and the, that was a huge drive as well. It really was that one where. Uh, it rolled dead on the half yard line and and uh, we moved it out I think two maybe three first downs and mm -hmm. then punted them clear down to the 20 they did end up coming down and getting a field goal but uh, who knows if we wouldn't have got it out so far they might have gone down and got a touchdown and uh, might have been a different story but uh, you know both teams played hard both teams did a lot of the things you have to do and uh, we did the things though we won the turnover margin yeah. we won the special teams and our defense was relentless and uh, so that's why we have a Big Ten road win. Yeah, and it's something maybe that we haven't seen. You, you do those things to win on the road, but that resiliency uh, to, to ask for offense on demand is something that you love to know is there if it can be there. Well, you, no doubt about it. And when they were called on, at the end of the field, they were called on with, the, with really the, the game's balance right there in front of them. And they came through as young guys. You know, uh, you have to be proud of them. Now we need to do that for four quarters. Absolutely. A couple of Buckeye profile segments.